Hi, we are moving on to a new topic called circular motion. Previously in IGCSE, you learned about the basic idea of circular motion in a qualitative approach. In IB, you are going to learn it in a quantitative approach. So that means there will be some equation, there will be some calculation that you need to do. Let's quickly take a look at what we have learned in IGCSE and some examples of circular motion. So first of all, here's a car that's moving in a circle. In fact, whenever a car is making a turn, that is part of the circle and we can call this circular motion already. For the distance between the car and the center of the circle, we will name it as R, which is the radius for a circle. And here you can see this is V, which is the tangential velocity, or we can call it linear velocity. And they have a relationship of uh, V squared over R, and that will equal to the centripetal acceleration. This is an equation that we will derive in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Another thing that you need to realize is that the acceleration is always towards the center, and that's why we call it centripetal, because the work centripetal means towards the center. The other thing that you may need to recall is that um, centripetal force is not really a force. Right? You can take it as the row of the force that help the object maintain the circle here. The actual force that is being the centripetal force here is called friction. And you can imagine without the friction, what happened to a car is it would keep skiing forward. So in, in this position, you can imagine this red car will keep moving forward if there's no friction to maintain this car for circular motion or simply turning. So the car would simply go straight forward and that is according to Newton's first law because there's no uh, other forces acting onto the car. Another example here would be you are using a string connected with an object, it could be a ball, and you swing it. Here I would like to ask you what is the actual force that is acting as the centripetal force? I'll give you 10 seconds. All right, the answer is actually tension because you can imagine again, without the tension, what happened to the ball is it will just go straight according to the direction of the tangential velocity. Here's another example. Um, obviously this is you know, our planet system and what is the force that maintaining us, the Earth or other planets orbiting around the Sun? Again, I'll give you 10 seconds to think about what force it is. The answer is very simple, and that is the gravitational force. And you can see, uh, no matter where we are on the orbit, the force is always pointing towards the center of the sun. So this is the centripetal force that we are having. Here's a simulation where I'll put a link in the description below. You can try it out yourself. Uh, but what I would like to try is that, let me turn on all these things. So you can see the blue factor is the gravitational force. The red factor or arrow is the velocity, they are always 90 degree. The blue one is always pointing to the center and the velocity is always at the tangent of the circle. One interesting thing is that, um, let's say I stop the motion right now, just simply pause it. So what I can do is I should be able to turn off the gravity. All right. Uh, in the past, I think there's no turning off button so I'll just remove the like move the sun far away but now it's good right I can just simply turn it off so I want you to guess what will happen in this case let's see the result in three two one go Okay, so as we expected, it will just follow the velocity direction and keep moving forward, right? If there's no gravity, that means there's no more force. And that follows the idea of Newton's first law. All right, so you make sure you really try it yourself and that's actually quite fun to manipulate the planet. 
That's pretty much all you have learned about circular motion previously. In the next video, we'll start to derive the equations about circular motion. And the most important one that will be the centripetal acceleration formula that you'll be using a lot in this topic. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye. Thank you.